Uh, Manchester United, <laughs> they're dominating the today's back pages once again this morning. Here's one of the headlines. Wayne, it's all gone wrong. Uh, back of the sun this morning, that one. Stories coming out of the United dressing room um, that the players are split. These keep coming out, don't they? Every now and then we get a, a new leak um, that the players are split. But uh, this is one. Um, <laughs> sorry. This one is actually on the potential of hiring Eric Ten Hag. That's what they're split on this morning uh, as an ex-permanent manager. So Wayne Rooney was in the studio last night saying actually if he had a choice he would say he'd go for Pochettino wouldn't he um, mm. over um, Eric Ten Hag um, a number of United players are reportedly excited by the prospect of being coached by Ten Hag and feel he would improve them but others are said to be underwhelmed by the potential appointment if you were the players in that dressing room who would you rather be managed by Carlton you first I wouldn't have an opinion <laughs> <laughs> really first mm, and foremost yeah. I'll take what I'm given and work hard for the team first and foremost because Look, th- th- those players in that chain, th- those those players cannot have a voice at the moment. They're not doing well. They're not any player, any manager that's come in. They've not performed. They can't come and start picking the managers who they want to play for. They yeah. At least do the the right thing and perform well and w- with what the manager that you have at the moment, and and work hard for each other and make sure that you don't let the the the, the club down. Right now. Every one of those players are letting the club down. Is that part of the problem that there, there are these leaks that are coming out that are saying that they feel like they do have a, not have a say necessarily, but they are unhappy with who's going to be managing them? Um, should, it, should it just be that players, like you say, just do their job, they don't have a say on this sort of thing, they'll get what they're given? Right now it is, because every manager, they've had, how many managers have they had since Alex this, Ferguson? Well, this <laughs> season yeah. alone, this is what, the third? Mm. Oli, and then they had Michael Carrick as an interim. Then they got another interim, yeah, and they'll like, have another one next. How much, how much excuses can you t- can you make? Like until you, people cotton on, <laughs> do you yeah. know what I mean? Like, come on! Like, we've got, first and foremost, do your job efficiently, and then maybe you don't have to start thinking about that manager. Which manager's coming in? Do your job first, and make sure that you do your job in the best way possible and efficiently. So you can get the next manager to come in that's not not taking over a sinking ship. Do you know what, psychologically as well, if you've already got in your head, I want that manager, and he doesn't come in, straight away you're a bit like, mm, yeah. I'm not quite sure. So I'm, I'm with Colton. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have a, an opinion. Whoever comes in, you've got to start performing. You can't keep blaming the managers. It's the players on the pitch that haven't performed. I know at times maybe Ralph, with the way he's set up the team... You go and you question some of the decisions yeah. to play certain players, but ultimately, effort. It's about effort, effort. endeavor. And at the minute, there would have been times, maybe not at the minute, but at times, Manchester United just haven't shown that consistently the, enough. They're hardest working players, Cristiano Ronaldo. <laughs> or Fred, even. Or Fred, or Fred even. Stick. Fred. He gets a lot of stick and he's been uh, working uh, hard. Uh, McTominay, one of the youngest in the team. How unsettling is it? I'm just giving the other side of the argument. If you're a Manchester United player and you've already had three managers with three different styles, whether or not they're permanent or interim, already in one season. How unsettling is that that you've then got to kind of go, right, OK, we're changing, we're adapting? Or as a Premier League footballer, Darren, should you be able to do that? You should be able to adapt because it, I, at Fulham, for instance, I had three managers in that one season. I, we started off How with Ma- Martin Yo, exactly. Ma- we had Martin Yo, then we had Rennie Murastein, then Felix Magat came in. Do you know what I mean? And we had Alan Kerbersley, who was kind of overseeing. So you're talking about really four managers mm. in and around the building, and it just doesn't work. Again, I could give you another example. So we got relegated at Fulham. Poor Charlton, when we got relegated. Again, that same thing. Kerbersley left the first season, mm. had Ian Dowie, then we had Les Reed, then we had Alan Pardew. Sometimes it, just, it it doesn't work. Too many voices, too many different tactics. But as players, we've got to be able to adapt. But right now, I mean, the Manchester United managerial situation is is bemu- is, is, is so strange yeah. because a club that size with that much kind of history, the size of the football club, they should be getting, and getting who they want. But the fact that now they're kind of scratching their heads, is it Ten Hag? Is it Pochettino? Is it this person? I'll never really get over the fact that they never went after Conte. He was the one, he was there, he was available, and they just let him go to Spurs. Mm. Um, I'm in agreement with you, actually, Carton. Thinking about it like that, and you're right. If you're not performing on the pitch, what right do you have to, to have any say <laughs> on who though. comes in? And this is, this is we say it a lot, don't we? This is Manchester United. Yeah. The fact that this conversation is even being had where there's... I mean, do you think that they already know the man that they want? Um, well, the powers that be are... They, they know what they want. They know exactly who they want to go after. Whether they get them or not... That's um, a different scenario, but the players, the players don't have a real say in what manager they play under. It's either that they play under the manager that's at present and and work hard and and buy into what he's trying to get out of the team. Yes, you can question the the tactics, you can question the, question the system, 
but at the same time there's no there's no replacement for for hard work and and dedication mm-hmm. and and i think that's a lot a lot of that is what's missing at, at, at man united at this present moment so they just have to wait and see who's going to come in and then hopefully this will be the the bingo for them this is going to be the, the the jackpot and they go and get who they want and then the players buy into it messages that are coming in just in the last couple of minutes after you've said what you said there yes Carlton as a Manchester Mm. United fan you're spot on next one I think I love Carlton (laughs) Uh, this is from Fergus he says true words Carlton Cole Um, this one's from Marlam he says absolutely spot on these players need to shut up and do their jobs before they even have an opinion on their next manager Um, spot on thoughts from Carlton Cole this morning that's from Nick Beard I love this loving thank you there's there's even another one from Paulinho he says oh man I love it when Carlton Cole's on talk sport Um, um, you should be on every morning. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I need an alarm clock for that one, then. Yeah, you, really, you really do. Eight o'clock's fine, but six o'clock, as Darren knows, is very really difficult, isn't tough. it? Talk Sport Breakfast with Laura Woods. Monday to Wednesday morning, 6 till 10. On AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app, and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.